Hello everyone! Today I wanna show you my new project on which I have been working for the last one and a half months. Dreamtime Combat is an action platformer based on Australian Aboriginal mythology. For people who don't know what is Dreamtime, when the gods woke up, they started to shape the world, deforming the landscape while they were wandering around. And in this game you have to end the era of Dreamtime by means of the violent murder of Australian gods, just because I like to make anti-hero protagonists in my games. In Australian mythology, gods often fight with carnivorous birds. In many tribes, people believed in a deity eagle hawk named Daramulon or Mulian. Actually, the name of the bird varied between different tribes. In one of the myths, Eagle Hawk was defeated in a battle with the god Bayani. But in my game, you can manage to kill this skinny bag of bones. There is only one kind of enemy, Australian Aborigines. But Aborigines are quite sophisticated. Indeed, they are smarter than their gods. Just look at this. They contain as twice as many lines of code as their first ancestor Bayane. They can use double jump to climb up high walls, jump over cliffs, attack and melee, pick up boomerangs and throw them at you. As a background, I drew something that looks like Yango Mountain, which is located in the lower Hunter region of New South Wales, in Eastern Australia. I didn't try to picture it exactly as it is, but just used it as a source of inspiration. In order to progress in the game, you should destroy the towns by dashing at them. Also, you can nail them down by jumping on them. It will reduce their health, but you still have to make the final blow with a dash attack. For what reason I added the possibility of nailing them down at all? Just for fun! It's one of the primary concerns of the game field technique. Turn any interactive object into a toy, so that the interaction with it will be enjoyable by itself. The spawn of the temps on the level was the most difficult issue for me. At first, the game determines where is the flat surface, and which parts of the surface area are free to spawn new to temps on them. Then the game chooses a random area and takes 10 tiles around it, so that the temps will not spawn too close to each other. Taken tiles of a chosen area are added into a dictionary as a value with the name of a totem as a key. When the totem is destroyed, the game doesn't immediately return back the taken area because in that case, the next totem will spawn at the same position as the previous one. Instead, the game saves the taken area into another temporal array, which will return the taken area back later after just destroying another totem. After the killing the first wave of aborigines and destroying their totems, the first boss Bayane will arrive. He is a culture hero, he gave people their instruments and rituals during the dream time. And in my game he drops boomerangs, which can be used by aborigines. He does not only drop boomerangs, but also charges power and explodes with an epic explosion wave. I made this cool donut shaped distortion of the screen with the help of some Australian aboriginal shader magic. Magic. To damage a boss, you have to destroy the Thames, which is quite difficult due to annoying aborigines. I wanted to bring an immeasurable amount of satisfaction from Beaten by Yale by making an epic death animation, which I think can leave an imprint on the overall game experience. The movement mechanic of the main character looks simple at first glance, but indeed there are a lot of subtle details which make controls feel right. I'm not even talking about coyote time, that's an obvious feature. I'm talking about such irritative situations when you are close to the ground, you wanna jump, you press the jump button, and you do double jump instead of the usual one, just because you didn't reach the ground. And then, when you wanna do the second jump in the air, you press the button and nothing happens, because you already did it. It just feels wrong, it feels like controls are irresponsive. So, 
Finally, I managed to fix it. If you press the jump button when you are very close to the ground, the game will wait till you touch it and only after that the character will jump, so that you will have a possibility to do a second jump in the air. There are a lot of such little tricks, which make controls more smooth and responsive. But even with the responsive controls, there are some cases when you can just forget whether you can jump in the air again or you already did it. To solve this problem, I implemented a simple visual feature that I saw in the platformer Celeste, where the hair of the main character turns blue when she uses her dash ability, which indicates that you have to recharge in order to use it again. I made almost the same thing, but with the legs and beak of the eagle hawk. This solution is much better than if I would indicate it by adding some unnecessary elements as part of the graphic user interface. I even decided to throw away the health bar. Instead, I tried to make something more immersive. The closer you are to death, the higher your heart rate, which is shown as screen distortion with the sound of a heartbeat. Health restores with time, but only if you manage not to get damaged for at least a couple of seconds. The way I made screen shakes in my previous games was completely wrong. I used to make screen shakes as animations of the camera movement, and it was the most stupid way of doing that kind of stuff, because it's tedious work, and in games it just feels too artificial due to the repetitiveness of the same screen shake animation playing over and over again. What a shame! Luckily, I found an awesome tutorial on YouTube with a great solution for nice screen shakes. It's not something too difficult to implement, it feels amazing, and I can quite easily tweak time, amplitude or whatever I want just by changing the values of variables. To add some more extra juice, I even made characters leave clouds of dust when they touch the ground. The kind of dust cloud depends on the type of action. Also, want to mention that the game has four soundtracks. One of them is peaceful, and it is just some random didgeridoo music. The other three are playing when you are in a battle. I took them from my old project, Top Down Shooter Flower Gunpowder, which I don't really like. I made the soundtracks using a free random generator of guitar riffs Djen and Audacity, and I think they are nicely fit to the game. The final boss is the Rainbow Serpent. Rainbow Serpent is a god of rain and water. I drew him almost at the beginning of the development and implemented him only at the end. The serpent turns the whole game into bullet hell. He shoots projectiles. The less health he has, the higher frequency of his attack, the more projectiles he shoots at once, and the higher speed of these projectiles. I thought that it'll be fun to see bones of the Rainbow Serpent through an X-ray any time you destroy the town. The death of the Rainbow Serpent is no less epic than the death of Bayane. His skin literally dissolves so that you can see his muscles, which a couple of seconds later dissolve too. And in the end he explodes with a cloud of dust, and at that point the era of Dreamtime is finally over. You can play Dreamtime combat directly in your browser or download it. Just play it. I promise you will have fun. And you're gonna die at least a couple of times, especially when you meet the Rainbow Serpent for the first time. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, leave comments below the video, follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server to see my next projects and be in contact with me. All linked in the description. See you soon.